Before he was the Mad King, before Rhaegar, there was Ares and Tywin. These videos are going to focus on a theory regarding Tywin and Ares. However, before we can understand Ares, we're going to first look at Tywin over the course of this video, starting from the very beginning. In 525, Lord Tytos, Tywin's father, agreed to wed his seven-year-old daughter Jenna to the younger son of Walder Frey, Lord of the Crossing. Though, at ten years of age, Tywin denounced the betrothal in scathing terms. Lord Tytos did not relent, yet still men could see that his iron-willed, fearless child was hard beyond his years and nothing like his amiable father. Tywin Lannister was scary, even as a child. Now, in our journey to understand who Tywin is as a person, we should pause and know something here. Tywin is concerned that his sister is marrying beneath her. He's concerned not because he cares about her as a person, per se, but because of her position within his family. He doesn't mind that Jenna is marrying mm. a weasel-faced toad man who will make her unhappy. The issue is that this weasel-faced toad person is the second son. Though, no, low-key internet, I have no idea how anyone could tell this. Walter Frey's family tree is a goddamn forest. And therefore, beneath his sister's considerations. Tywin doesn't really care about family members as people, or about extensions of himself. Extensions of his pride. Tywin despised his father, the weak-willed, fat, and ineffectual Lord Titus Lannister, and his relations with his brother Ticket and Geryon were notoriously stormy. He showed more regard for his brother Kevin, close confidant and constant companion since childhood, than his sister Jenna, but even in those cases, Tywin Lannister appeared more dutiful and affectionate. To take special note here of the way Tywin treats other people, it's going to be extremely important for understanding the downfalls of Ares later on. Tywin gives his family the esteem he thinks they're due, but doesn't really have any genuine affection towards any of them. Thematically, I think Tywin's view of love might be a reaction against his father, Tytos. Tytos was desperate to be loved, and would debase himself and compromise his principles in order to make people like him. He wanted love to be given freely. Tywin hated his father, and so, like all children, took the opposite view. Love needed to be earned, is highly conditional, and will be withdrawn if a person fails to meet his high standards. His sister Jenna said this about him. I was my father's precious princess. And Tywin's too. Until I disappointed him. Look what she says later on about her betrothal. I was seven, when Walder Frey persuaded my lord father to give my hand to him. His second son, not even his heir. Father was himself a third-born son, and younger children craved the approval of their elders. Frey sensed that weakness in him, and father agreed for no better reason than to please him. My betrothal was announced at a feast with half the West in attendance. Ellen Tarbeck laughed, and the Red Lion went angry from the hall. The rest sat on their tongues. Only Tywin dared speak against the match. A boy of ten. Father turned as white as mare's milk, and Walder Frey was quivering. She smiled. How could I not love him? It's not to say I approved what he did, or much enjoyed the company of the man he became. But every little girl needs a big brother to protect her. And Tywin was big, even when he was little. Still, whatever his reason, it's cool he stood up for his little sister. But what would happen next, potentially as a result of it, would eventually lead to the downfall of Westeros itself. Not long after the Frey incident, Lord Tytos dispatched his heir to King's Landing to serve as cupbearer at King Aegon's court, probably so he could be free from his son's judgmental stare. And this, in hindsight, was a mistake. Tytos had accidentally given his son access to the king's court, and allowed a ten-year-old Tywin to befriend a then eight-year-old heir to the throne, Ares Targaryen, as well as Ares' cousin, six-year-old Stefan Baratheon, who would go on to become the father of Robert Baratheon, not to mention best boy, Renly. On a peach. The text would go on to quote these boys as becoming inseparable, an alliance that would go on to prove problematic for his father, Lord Tytos, and life ruining for Ares. However, before we can go on, we have to cut it there, because I'm on a deadline and I only have so much time and gin. Quit your complaining, all two of my subscribers. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh my. <laughs> when did you all get here? Well, the script's all done, so part two will be out next week. Well, I hear subscribing makes it come out faster. 